I'm going to do something a little different today. I could talk at you about what baptism means and why Jesus was baptized and how we share in that. I could point out some of the parallels between Genesis and Mark. Um, but instead, today I'm going to stop talking. And I'm just going to roll up my sleeves and I'm going to do something uh, that I think tells the story better than I could. And so I hope that you'll just trust me on this, that you'll go along, give me a chance, and pay attention and see how this sermon speaks to you.
So I'm not going to add too much to that because I think the act of creating that painting stands as a sermon on its own. Um, but I did want to lift up maybe a few things that I learned in that. First of all, is that, uh, I had no idea how that was going to turn out. Um, that was as much a surprise to me as it was to you. I mean, of course, I had some ideas, right, because I picked the colors, but I had no idea how they were going to combine and mix and swirl. And that's what's really cool about this kind of painting is that it's always a surprise. And I think maybe that same thing is true of creation. Um, that creation isn't good in as much as it conforms to God's idea of what it should be beforehand, but in how it uh, surprises and delights God as it unfolds. That painting actually took about twice as long as I thought it would. And I started worrying about it getting boring through you watching. But um, if you notice, like it was always changing and just there was almost some drama in it, right? As soon as you thought something was going to go one way, it went another. I was really disappointed when the blue in the corner went away. Um, but then it came back later as this beautiful melange of purple that just sort of spread and took over that corner. And that was really neat. You know, I thought we were done with it and then it came back. Um, you know, I think this is all says something about what creation is and does. I'd like to show you something. Um, if you've been in my office ever, you've seen these pictures on the back wall there. These are all pictures that uh, kids from our congregation have made for me. And I love them. Uh, not because they're going to be worth a lot of money someday or because uh, they're uh, such great representations of what these kids see, but because of the work and the love that went into making them. I love that each of these kids decided that they wanted to make something for me. And so every time I look at those pictures, I feel that love and that appreciation. And it reminds me of each of those kids. And that's what I love about them. That's why I hang them up. Um, and I wonder if Maybe that's the kind of love that God has for creation, too. That it's not about, um, again, how good it is uh, in conforming to God's vision. But um, if God loves it simply because it belongs to God, because God made it. Think about how proud those kids are of those pictures that they made. Um, that's, I think, what God feels for us. And I think that... The reading today reminds us of that, that when Jesus comes up out of the water, he's reminded that it's not anything that he's done or his mission or anything about that that makes him God's son. He is that because he is that. And the same is true for us. God made us. We are capable of surprising and delighting God in new and wonderful ways that even God maybe can't imagine. And that's what makes us good. That's what makes us beloved. It puts a whole new spin on ideas about sin and justification and salvation. Um, and I think that's a really beautiful thing. Think about that. That God loves us. That God values us. That we are good, not because of what we do or who we become or anything about us at all, except that God made us. God poured that love and that effort into us, into our world. And God is surprised and delighted by how it unfolds.